Hello and welcome to Cats Week. I'm Annalise Poorman. During the December 4th COVID-19 press conference, Bloomington Mayor John Hamilton said Indiana is averaging one COVID-19 related death every 24 minutes. IU Health Hospital South Central Region President Brian Shockney spoke about Monroe County hospital capacities. Uh, as of yesterday, IU Health's ICU beds were at 83% occupancy. South Central Region was exactly the same, 83% of our ICU beds currently being taken. We currently uh, continue to feel comfortable that we have the adequate beds across the IU Health system. We have supplies, staffing resources to manage the surge, but it is at risk if we continue to see higher levels of patients. Shockney mentioned the first COVID-19 vaccinations would be distributed to healthcare workers in mid-December. He stated the general public would receive vaccinations in mid-2021. We will administer the vaccine it, it acquires based on a priorities that include medical risk, public health, ethics, equity, societal and economic impact, and logistics. So the initial groups to receive the vaccine are patient-facing healthcare workers, including long-term care, police and fire personnel with frequent contact with the public, and vulnerable populations such as people with health conditions that put them at significant risk of COVID-19. So you need to get two vaccinations. The vaccines currently awaiting for final FDA approval require two doses, one 21 days apart, the other 28. Meticulous records will ensure that each individual will have their second dose by the same company as their first dose in this time frame. We will share more information with the public as it becomes available. Monroe County Health Administrator Penny Cottle stated volunteers are needed for vaccine distribution. She mentioned volunteers do not need a medical background. So we would encourage you to go to the county's webpage, you can go to the health department's webpage, public health preparedness, and there is a medical reserve core page. We're working on getting a, a quick link to that. Um, but if you will go there, it will give you information about how you can sign up and what that means. You can go ahead and get some of the basic training done so that you will be available to help us. I know people want to help. And this is the way that you can do that right now is go ahead and get signed up. Monroe County Commissioner Julie Thomas stated the businesses and social services CARES funding was continued with an increase of $30,000 worth of assistance for each business. She said any business in need of assistance should visit the county website at co.monroe.in.us. She also reported on the Township Trustees Assistance Program. Um, our Township Assistance uh, Fund has, is going well. Um, and it's unfortunate that we need it, but for any resident who needs help paying for rent, utilities, or other necessities, please contact your township trustee as soon as possible. We have now um, allocated another $25,000 to total of $75,000 into this fund. Uh, we have expanded the funds cap to $200,000 uh, into next year, and we hope it holds out. But with utility bills, uh, with the winter months coming on, uh, this is going to be a very important program. We're very proud to work with our council uh, and the board to make that happen. Thomas said all county buildings remain closed to the public. The Bloomington Utility Service Board discussed a donation program for the Lake Monroe Water Steering Committee. Director of Utilities Vic Kelson spoke during their December 7th meeting. What we're talking about here is that uh, there's been a coordinated effort of a number of organizations, the Nature Conservancy, the Corps of Engineers, uh, Indiana University, uh, help if, uh, if I leave anybody out. I use involved, CMU has been involved at some level, the city continues to be involved, uh, and, and a number of other organizations uh, to establish a water fund that uh, would be a charitable contribution that uh, people could make to um, support watershed restoration and watershed protection activities in the Monroe, uh, the Lake Monroe watershed. Uh, this has been an ongoing discussion with uh, Friends of Lake Monroe and all these other organizations, including farmer groups, uh, uh, other landholders and so forth in the watershed 
Kelson said donations would be used for watershed restorations and upkeep. He mentioned the donations would become part of each resident's water bill. We were asked if it would be possible for us to uh, invite customers to make a contribution to the water fund uh, as some as a voluntary check off on their water bill, whether that would be a roundup kind of a thing or whether they could just write in an amount that they wanted to donate. But the, the, the principle of the thing is that customers would have the opportunity by just adding a little bit to their water bill um, to contribute to the long term uh, health and protection of the Lake Monroe watershed and our water supply. Kelson reported a similar program is used by the City Parks Department. Board member Amanda Burnham asked attorney Chris Wheeler how long the program would run. At the moment, it's going to go as long as CBU and obviously USB through its approval of these things, uh, as long as we wish for it to. Uh, we, we will want to have an open-ended termination that we can, we can just terminate this when we need to. The Utilities Board agreed to table the resolution until a January meeting. The Bloomington Redevelopment Commission discussed a recommendation to keep the core building on the old IU Health Bloomington Hospital site. Project Manager Kelly Boatman spoke about repurposing the core building during their December 7th meeting. There's some immediate things that need to be done to make sure the building uh, can be standalone. And so in conjunction with the demolition of the main hospital site, uh, there's a list here of, of um, items, new power service, water service, fire and fire, fire service and fire alarm controls, uh, and then shoring up that area on the northwest wall that uh, adjoins the current main hospital building. Uh, making sure that that wall is reconstructed to protect it from weather. And those short-term costs, uh, which will be in conjunction with the demo of the site, are uh, $600,000 to $750,000. And then any long-term costs that would be incurred to rehab the building would be, uh, the intent there is those long-term costs would be borne by the developer that um, is uh, the, development, the, the development partner that comes on board to uh, repurpose the building. Economic and Sustainable Development Director Alex Crowley said the core building could support up to 50 office suites. He also mentioned a potential adaptive use for residential space. We, we feel confident that there is a residential um, adaptive reuse of the building. The fact that it's a historic building actually helps when accumulating points for low-income housing tax credits so that's uh, interesting to note. And, and then, you know, having said that, there are certainly gonna be some costs uh, as, you know, it's an old building and it has potential uh, uncertainty related to asbestos remediation. So there are gonna be some costs associated with it. Um, but we've, we came away from this process feeling uh, optimistic that there was at least uh, value in, in looking at the building as, as, uh, as something that could be reused in the residential space. Deputy Mayor Mick Renison said a decision to either keep or demolish the building must be made by December 31st of this year. He mentioned a decision to keep the building could be reconsidered in 2022 after site redevelopment construction has begun. The Redevelopment Commission unanimously approved the recommendation to keep the building. And we'll have more Cats Week after this message. Let's talk about sex. What is consent? And what's not? Consent is based on choice. Consent is active, not passive. Consent is giving permission without feeling pressure. What is not consent? Silence. Passed out. Intoxicated. Fear. Is it not, is not consent. consent. Got consent? Ask. Sex without consent is a crime. Only yes means yes. Welcome back to Cats Week. The Bloomington Board of Public Works approved an order to remove for 1020 West Allen Street. Neighborhood Compliance Officer Mike Arnold spoke of the structure's condition during their December 8th meeting. Uh, this is a property that uh, has extensive fire damage from a fire that was late September, early October. 
um, we're just asking for um, the board to uphold the order to rem the resolution for the uh, order to remove to make sure that the uh, what's remaining of the structure and the debris on the property is removed. Arnold said the property owners received notice of removal on November 21st. He stated that the owners must choose a contractor to perform the demolition. Director of Bloomington Parks and Recreation, Paula McDevitt proposed a policy update to prohibit camping and makeshift structures. She said the structures violated social use policy during the December 8th Board of Park Commissioners meeting. No person shall conduct, operate, present, manage, or take part in the following activities in a park or at a department-owned facility unless a special use permit is obtained from the department administrator or their appointed representative prior to the start of that activity. Under this section, item three currently reads, camping on lands of the department or inhabiting any structure of facility overnight without a permit. Park hours are 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. and that constitutes overnight. The proposed wording is camping upon or otherwise inhabiting any property, structure, or facility of the department at any time without a permit. McDevitt mentioned social services were contacted to help create plans for people currently inhabiting park campsites. She stated immediate change would not be expected. We have reached out to our isolation shelter partners and our public health in parks partners to talk about the issue and to plan how we can together work with people who are living under these conditions to identify resources, to sit and talk about what their needs are, where their challenges are, and to communicate what resources are available, that there are daytime shelters, that there are beds available for overnight shelters, and what who needs to connect the dots to provide these services so that people are taken care of who are currently living under these conditions in several of our parks. One resident of the park campsite said some people cannot get into homeless shelters. They asked the board for a designated campsite area for those people. Maybe we can get like a little piece of uh, property. There's a, uh, a little land next to the Salam Center here in Bloomington that maybe we can uh, Stab is like maybe a, tw a, a 20 uh, tent area and make like a little tent homeless, emergency homeless to get out of the rain at night time or the snow and the cold. And we can have it to where we can just pitch them up at nighttime and have them tore down by morning. You know what I mean? By before the businesses open up and, and make sure it ain't like it was here at Seminary Park, man. The trash here, it, it, it made it look bad. A lot of us, some of us out here don't live that bad and, or like that at all. And it, it makes us look bad when other people live like that, live like that. The resident suggested collecting community signatures to show support of starting a clean city campsite. Executive Director of Hotels for Homeless, Katie Norris, said the campsite residents have cleaned up the park. Mark Teller of the Homeless Coalition expressed his concern for the policy change. It goes without saying that I think this is a horrible idea to kick people out of their tents in the middle of a pandemic, in the beginning of a winter, without any alternative. Now you've said, I've heard things mentioned about resources that they don't use. They can't use those resources. A lot of times you can't get a bed if you're not an addict, or you can't get a bed if you don't uh, check all of the boxes. It's not that there are beds and these people are refusing to use them, it's that they are not offered the beds. They're empty because they don't want people in them. Teller reported the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released a statement which recommended residents inhabiting campsites to remain where they are and that tearing down a camp could cause greater disease spread. Resident David Warren stated similar flexibility given to local businesses should be given to the homeless population. Like many cities, uh, Bloomington, to its credit, pursued greater flexibility for our great downtown local restaurants the past few months by allowing them to set up tents, tables, bubbles, and other structures in streets and on sidewalks to help these businesses weather the storm of the pandemic. 
The CDC suggests similar care and flexibility should be pursued for homeless communities throughout the United States. Yet now the city of Bloomington is considering a policy change that would actually remove flexibility for some of our most vulnerable residents and make it illegal to set up temporary shelter from the winter elements during a worsening pandemic. Yes, our community has public and nonprofit organizations and initiatives that serve the homeless community, but clearly those resources are not nearly enough to fully address the problem. Banning tents in public parks simply passes more responsibilities onto other entities in a time of local, state, and national crisis. Please do not send the message that flexibility and understanding and protections from harm are more likely to be extended to Bloomington residents with more political and economic power. Bloomington resident Savannah Perlman mentioned prohibiting tents would increase the chance of community members freezing to death. Commissioners denied the policy on a three-to-one vote, with Commissioner Les Coyne voting in favor. The Monroe County Council discussed additional appropriation requests from the coroner's office during their December 8th meeting. Coroner Joni Shields reported an increased number of deaths in 2020. It actually has went surpassed last year's number by far. We had 208 at the end of the year on December 31st. This year, to date, we're at 249. That's how many cases we've actually been involved with. Um, our overdose rate is up. Um, I, these are not COVID-related deaths. I don't want to mislead anybody in thinking that that's why the numbers are up. Not directly related. Could it be indirectly? Possibly. Um, people being quarantined at home, people um, pretty much isolated to themselves, close family, not able to get out and do the things that they normally do to get their minds off things, not going to the doctor like they should because they're scared to go out into the public, not going to the hospital emergency department when they should or waiting too late. So that has increased our number of cases. Shields mentioned an increase in transportation and autopsy fees for the coroner's office and requested $15,500 to cover the year's remaining costs. The council unanimously approved the request. On December 9th, Bloomington City Council member Steve Volan proposed the formation of a Citizens Redistricting Advisory Commission. Volan described the commission at the City Council Community Affairs Committee meeting. So it proposes a nine-person commission, three Democrats, three Republicans, three independents. Um, and they have a two-year mandate. They would, be, they would start at the beginning of 21. And by the end of 22, they would have to have submitted a proposed map for the council to approve. Um, they would have to meet at least 12 times over that two years, at least once every two months but they could meet more often if they want to. <clears throat> and they would have a two-year mandate. Uh, so redistricting happens in the uh, second year after a census, but in the first year after a census, there's re-precincting that's done at the county level. And how the precincts are drawn directly affects how districts in the city are drawn. And uh, so if the commission isn't familiar and, and with and aware of what's happening at the county level, uh, it may make it more difficult in the second year of the decade to redistrict at the city. So this proposes a two-year uh, commission so that the commissioners can learn uh, all the ins and outs of redistricting, which is very complicated, uh, and can also give input when the county commissioners consider reprecincting. Volan said the council would choose 18 candidates and nine of the 18 would be selected at random to serve on the committee. The committee unanimously voted to send a due pass recommendation to the City Council. And we'll have more Cats Week after this message. Girls Inc. believes every girl can succeed. That's why the trained professionals of Girls Inc. are there for our girls every day, supporting, mentoring, and guiding them in a safe, girls-only environment, building bonds that last for years and change that lasts a lifetime. Girls Inc. gives girls the tools they need to boldly face challenges, to resist peer pressure, to be the first in their families to go to college, to beat the odds. With Girls Inc. in her corner, every girl can be healthy, confident, and resilient. 
She'll do more than dream about her potential. She'll reach it. With you in my corner. With you in my corner? I will not be another statistic. I will fight for myself. For my future. With you in my corner, I will win. Fuel her fire and she will change the world. Girls Inc. Inspiring all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Welcome back to Cats Week. The Bloomington City Council Public Safety Committee discussed a collective bargaining agreement between the City and Metropolitan International Association of Firefighters. City Attorney Philippa Guthrie spoke of the agreed-upon four-year contract regarding firefighter salaries during their December 9th meeting. The total impact is calculated at $1,946,339. That's approximately $487,000 a year. The base salary percentages, uh, the increases are 1% 1 for 2021 and 2% for the three successive years, uh, all three of those years. Um, probably one of the biggest changes is to longevity. That uh, is a payment that is made annually uh, per officer. Uh, we, it used to be that in the existing contract and for several contracts, I believe it started at $800 a year uh, starting in the second year of a firefighter's career with the city. And uh, it went up in uh, every few years at a different increment. Uh, and we wanted to kind of rationalize that and have it go up $100 per year so it was easier to understand. Guthrie said the increase would be $100 each year and would cap after the 20th year. She also said that certification pay would be $100 per certification. Guthrie stated a clothing allowance would also be provided. We pay for um, and provide their protective equipment, their basic firefighting equipment, and they're responsible for dress uniforms, bad shirts, uh, duty wear and some other items and so we give them a clothing allowance that is going up from 450 to 500 dollars. The committee unanimously voted to send a due pass recommendation to the City Council. The Bloomington City Council Administration Committee considered the language of Title II of the Bloomington Municipal Code entitled Administration and Personnel during their December 9th meeting. Committee member Steve Volan said the most controversial amendment regarded fiscal impact statements. Uh, it simply eliminates Section 2.04.290, which altogether uh, this is a uh, uh, a, a been a, a real challenging uh, nut to crack, but basically the notion of fiscal impact statements. Um, Councilmember Neer in 2013 uh, had done some research and discovered that the, the concept of a fiscal impact statement goes back in Bloomington to 1959. That's how old this idea is. And certainly the code that governs it was written in the mid 70s. Volan said fiscal impact statements are already included in appropriation ordinances and that fiscal impacts are presented as part of any ordinance. If the administration brings an ordinance to the council, they always tell us if it will have a fiscal impact. We ask them always, do you have the budget for this? If they don't, they have to, to ask for more money through an appropriation ordinance, once again, making fiscal impact self-evident. Controller Jeff Underwood reported any fiscal impact information could be found in legislation and appropriation ordinances. The committee members continued the discussion to a future administration committee meeting. The Monroe County Commissioners approved an agreement with Butler, Fairman, and Sufert Incorporated for preliminary engineering of a connector trail. County Highway Director Lisa Ridge spoke about connectivity during their December 9th meeting. Um, we have been uh, looking at ways to get a connection over to our Karst Trail. Um, so that way that um, you would have a connection from the Karst Trail to the Beeline Trail. And this is what that will accomplish. So we did do RFPs. Um, I believe we had seven uh, 
RFPs returned and we scored them just as we do um, on a federal aid project. Um, and Butler Fairman was the chosen consultant. So we would want to enter into preliminary engineering um, for this connector to actually go from Liberty Drive down Constitution, Liberty to Constitution, then over to Curry Pike, across Curry Pike, over to Sierra, and then that can, the back of that connects with our cars, existing Karst Trail. Ridge said the project would cost approximately $213,000 and that trail design should be completed in 2021. Bloomington City Planner Eric Grulick presented a mixed-use student housing rezone request for an East Brownstone Drive property at the December 9th Bloomington City Council Land Use Committee meeting. Grulick said the project would include three multi-story buildings, the tallest being six stories. Um, so the site has a kind of a significant amount of grade change as you move from east to west across the site. Uh, it's about 50 feet of road uh, elevation change. Um, so the building design has been shown as kind of a, a staggered height uh, that kind of drops down from one and two stories on the west end of the site, as you see here, um, to five and kind of six stories uh, along the east end of the site. Designer Jack Borman said glass skywalks would connect the buildings. Grulick cited plans for an internal parking garage and three drive cuts to 14th Street. He mentioned surrounding zones were listed as residential high-density multifamily and single-family. Committee member Isabel Piedmont-Smith asked petitioner Aaron Stange about an on-site officer. He mentioned that there would be a unit offered to local police. Could you yes. describe that, please? Sure. So um, maybe a good parallel would be here at, uh, at, the, at the market in Athens. We, uh, we, we do typically offer, uh, especially on projects of this kind of size, um, a local policeman to kind of live on, uh, on premise. Uh, and it's, it's free of charge. But, um, you know, obviously that, that has certain security benefits that I think we, we, we enjoy and appreciate on our properties. Stange said past developments with in-house officers saw success in deterring crime and that one-third of development units would be affordable housing, the majority of which are single rooms. The committee recommended due pass to the city council with committee member Steve Volan voting against. County Highway Director Lisa Ridge proposed a yearly increase to the stormwater system fee to assure project completion. She spoke during the December 9th Monroe County Stormwater Management Board meeting. So as we moved forward and we were seeing that the cost of these projects coming in well exceeded what our budget could sustain. Um, we have a cartograph project or program in-house. This uh, tackles all the requests that we take every day for stormwater requests and people that are flooded in their homes, people that their uh, driveways are flooded out. Uh, it could be a number of reasons of what is happening. We have over, you know, I can go over all those numbers with you of over how many open requests that we have. Um, so we realize also that our crew is um, not large enough to um, keep up with the problems that are in Monroe County. Multiple county residents expressed their support for the increase. The board continued the proposal to their January 13th meeting. And that is all for Cats Week. Thank you for joining us. For Cats and WFHB, I'm Annalise Poorman.